new outputs came in, so they've been mounted. Looked at a couple of different strategies for remounting these to the heat sink. Uh, Audio Karma has a really good thread where someone made um, kind of little brackets, aluminum brackets out of eighth inch aluminum to hold these in place. But as I started looking at it, I mean, these these aren't going anywhere. They're not moving. So I just use the existing clips. The uh, new replacement plastic clips have been back ordered. They're not supposed to be in until the middle of September. I don't think that was the issue that caused the short dough, though, because it was working before I adjusted that trim pot. So I'm going to reuse the original clips. They're still on there. I haven't uh, done anything with those. I do have to trim a little bit off of these connectors, right? these posts. So I need to take off about maybe a quarter of an inch, third of an inch, something like that. So I'll be clipping those off. I'm going to reinstall it into the receiver and we're going to fire it up and see what happens. All right, heat sink is back in, amp board's in. What I'm going to do before I connect the outputs, I'm going to fire it up with the outputs disconnected and because I want to see what happens. I tested to make sure that there were no shorts with how I installed or no well, no potentials for short circuits with the way I installed the brackets on the outputs. Just wanted to make sure there's no continuity between the heat sink and any of the any of the posts. So this is off. I'm gonna plug this in and stick this into the ground, someplace where I can ground it. Let me make sure this is grounded. Yep. All right. So again, what I'm all I'm looking for uh, right now is just voltages, and I want to make sure my dim bulb doesn't do anything that I don't want it to do when I fire this up. So let's see what happens. So that's good. And I got a relay click from the protection circuit. Now, no, I don't have the outputs connected. So I just want to look for kind of anomalous readings here. Two volts. And then I want to compare it to this other side. Two volts. Negative two. Now with that, without these connected, they're going to be kind of weird. Negative two. Okay. Now I'm going to let this sit for a little bit because if this is anything like my 3900, these are going to have, I don't know, looks like they've discharged. On my 3900, they stayed charged like forever. And as I'm connecting these, I don't want anything bad to happen. So I'm going to let it sit anyway for a couple of minutes, connect them up, see what happens. Outputs have been connected. Uh, the collectors on these, and I didn't show the voltage in the last little segment, but the collectors on these uh, were maintaining high voltages, so they, they would trickle down from about 20 volts. So that's why I wanted to let it sit. The collectors, I mean the bases, um, what I showed in the video when I, was, when I was measuring their voltage, they were around two volts. Um, none of these trim pots had been turned fully counterclockwise. So once I did that, they were showing just a couple hundred millivolts. But again, that's with the outputs disconnected. So I think with any luck, I should be able to fire this up and not have a catastrophe, but we will see here in a minute so make sure this is turned down all the way treble and bass are off not that this matters but auxiliary eh, it can be FM doesn't matter all right let's see what happens and yeah, we got the relay click and the dim bulb is so far so good I'm 
going to turn uh, it off though and I'm going to look at um, the alignment procedures for the amplifier section though now. So I want to see what the um, DC offset, see if I can set the bias and those types of things on. Alright, so I'm going to adjust You know, I could, well, I'm going to leave it up on its side just because I don't, I just want to leave it up on its side. I know it's kind of sucky to see this, but I'm going to leave it on the side. We're going to see what we have in terms of DC offset. Uh, I've got two probes attached already back in here on this side because I came in from the clip side last time and that's when the smoke was being released. So I don't want to risk flexing a board or anything that, that may have caused that. I still think it was that... Uh, trim pot. So let's see what we have here. 171. All right, so let's see. Relay clicked. Going to give this a second to stabilize. We're going to do initial adjustment, then we're going to wait five minutes and see what happens. So And with this one, you start in the middle, and you want to make really, really small adjustments. This is very touchy, and you don't want to freak anything out. So, All right, so that channel is good. Looks like that channel is good. So I'm kind of skittish when I do this. So... Uh, carefully to this channel so the other channel we got 205 we'll adjust this it's pretty high but let's see if I turn it counterclockwise it goes down so get this to zero I might just have to get it close enough. Yeah, it's pretty touchy. All right, so DC offset is set to zero on both channels. I'm going to turn it off. We got zero on both channels. Uh, I need to very carefully remove those leads. I don't want anything to happen. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, pause come back and we'll start setting uh, the bias. DC offset is zero. I'm gonna start with the odd side, right? So uh, we're gonna adjust VR3 for 120 millivolts between positive 28 and negative 25. And I've got the uh, mini grabbers already in there. So we're at 0.67 volts. Wait, that, I want to make sure I got these connected to the right. Because that's half a volt is high. Let's see if, I want to see if adjusting this does anything. So this is fully counterclockwise. And that's sending it up. So that is not good. That is not good. So I'm getting 0.68 on that channel. Ah, crap. Just curious what. And this is not adjusting it at all. So I want to make sure I've got the right, he's in the right position. So uh, let me come back. I did not have the camera running when I did the odd channel 
And what happened was I did have it on the wrong leads. It's kind of congested in there, so I had it um, on some, some different uh, test points. So this side is good. This side is, uh, the leads are set properly. So, and I've checked to make sure nothing's in the short. Again, I'm super skittish when I do these. So turn this on. We got 86, 89 millivolts. I know it hasn't really warmed up, but it'll stabilize here in a minute or so. So I'm gonna go in and turn VR4 clockwise until I get 120, very slowly. And I'm barely touching this. This is really touchy. And this is going to climb, so I'm going to hold it at 119. And kind of let it sit. Now I'm going to explain to you what the next, the next step is, which is kind of odd. So you do DC offset, which we've done. I've already done both steps on the odd channel. But keeping the contacts or the test, the, the probe leads on the same points, test points, you are going to uh, adjust a different variable resistor, a different trim pot. So like I said, I knew that was going to come up a little bit. So we'll let this, we'll bring this back down. This is what I did on the other one after a couple minutes. It was, it was okay. Again, very, very, very small movements here. And you just barely touch it and it jumps. And you can uh, kind of fry one of these if you're not careful. Ask me how I know, right? So now, with that at 120, we go to the next trim pot and I'm going to turn it up to 150 and carefully. And then what I'll do is I'm going to let this sit for 15 or 20 minutes, come back and check both sides, kind of see how far we've drifted. Usually after a good 15 or 20 minutes, you can kind of leave them where they're set. So there, we got 150. So I'm going to let this run. Come back 10 minutes, see what's going on. Uh, if there's nothing eventful that happens, uh, I won't film anymore for this portion. Uh, so what will happen is we'll go on to, turn this down just a little bit. We'll go on to finding some replacement buttons and seeing what we need to do to change out some of the lights on the switches that aren't working. So. Fingers crossed, nothing significant happens from this point. And uh, in the next video, you'll see me finding some buttons and changing some uh, buttons and lamps. So until then, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.